The problem is the following. The game does not perform nearly so well if I build with the x64 back end. Sometime in the past day, something happened where now if I start the game, that's all we get. Like we literally don't even manage to open a window. So we're triggering something bad in x64. And the extra challenge is the x64 back end doesn't even output debug information. So I don't think I can get a stack trace on this. Let's just see what we get if we try running it. Source not available. Source information is missing. So it's invoke main. That's all that we're doing here. OK. Well, we're in main. We're somewhere from main doesn't tell us a whole lot. Um, now, I think I might be able to try. I've never tried turning on debug info in x64. We might be able to do that. So uh, oh, uh, oh. OK. Emit debug info. So when we set up debug, we set back end. Well, these are the same. Emit debug info. Uh, we'll just comment this out. Let's see if we get useful debug info out of this. Wow, that takes a long time. Jesus. Really? Does emitting debug info take that long? Oh, my God. We're going to have to figure out why that takes. I didn't write that part. Let's just say that. Oh, hey. We do get some debug info. So we're getting a type info. And it's really not a valid pointer for some reason. So do I trust that we're on this line? Why do we not have a type info for camera tweaks or why is it not initialized? It's not even mapped memory. So that is bad. Well, That's actually pretty straightforward. What if I, you know, that's the kind of thing where if it happens, I think, I think if we compile in debug mode, we should get an assertion. Because, you know, usually, if something that bad happens, we should know. Now, maybe that's not true, but we'll see. So maybe something changed. Maybe we have too many types all of a sudden and we don't handle it correctly. I don't know. It, it could be all sorts of problems. Wouldn't I want to look at the diff since the last working version? That's one way we could do it. We could like binary search. 
but it might if it's a it might be a bug that has nothing to do with the actual change right the change might be just exhibiting something okay let's see if we get an assert let's take out all our breakpoints no, take them out. Why are they both selected? What's going on? Okay. Can't comprehend how you got the VS debugger to step through your source files in your own language. Well, the, you know, the simpler debug formats are relatively well documented. Okay, we didn't assert, so that's weird. And let's go into the start of Sokoban. So we are relatively early on. We're like here. So we really don't know, like maybe at least one type info worked, but maybe a lot of them are screwed up. We don't even know. So for example, like what happens if we do this? We just comment out the first two. We still die. So I feel like it's a serious problem. Okay. Uh, let's say... We have this thing called get type table. So we're going to do this. Table is get type table. For table print the index and there. Don't even get there. Maybe we can't even call print because print print does type info stuff. Let's just see where we crash, but I bet it's there. I think our whole type table is hosed. Yeah. Like Our whole damn type table is hosed. Full of garbage. Why would that happen? It's a good question. hard to print debug info when you can't even print anything. Why is our type table host? Okay. Let's look and see if anybody made any type table related changes. I didn't. So Ignacio is doing some game stuff. These guys are doing build system stuff. I did this. Bool the float cast compiler bug, but that I'm pretty sure that was independent of this other thing.
Okay, well, I don't see, I may be missing something, but I don't see any obvious type table thing. So let's go over there. Well, okay, here's a thing though, right? It's only in X64 that this screws up. LLVM does not screw up. I don't remember, prepare data for type table. Okay. Pull the data over from type table packer. And then I can step through all this stuff. Let's see what it looks like. Where the hell is dump bin? Dude, not having dump bin in my path is ass. All right, let's go find that. I don't know. All right, well, that's great. That's a really nice path. Okay. So we have a types, it's pretty big. It's almost as big as the program text at this point, so we have to do some things to weed that out eventually. Um, but it is there for sure. Forward slashes, not backslashes. Forward slashes. There's no relocations. Okay, that's a problem. That is a problem. So, um, at least I think that's the problem. So all of this stuff in the type table is about has it's a bunch of pointers, right? And pointers need to have relocations in the object file. Oh maybe I don't know. Let's look. Finish type table and write relocations. Uh-oh, see this comment? If the number of relocations gets large, which may happen, we could do something in the cop file to extend them, but we haven't done this yet. 
Uh, uh, maybe, but this did, this assert didn't go off. But like maybe we're at 32,000, you know, and maybe that's bad. So uh, let's just see. Let's just break here. LLVM is not fast, but it's also not the reason Rust and Swift are slow. Those compilers, wait, what? Oh, I'm not even in the right place. Hold on. Let's just put a breakpoint there. Back in a second. Well, now I'm a little bit concerned. Are we like exiting? Are we like exiting without doing this? What the hell, bro? Set a breakpoint and report VA list in case, in case we're exiting that way. Come on, people. Report VA list. Failed to write the output file. Permission denied. Oh, dude, we're not even running the X64 build. That's why we didn't frickin' Did I return the laptop? I am thinking about it. I'm kind of angry about this laptop that I bought. It has a lot of stupid problems. Okay, okay. Finish type table. And write relocations. You got some Lambda patches. So we're claiming to write relocations. Damn, dude, we've got some pointers. Oh my God. We sure have a lot of relocations. We've got 10,000 of them. Um,
let's see. Four, eight, ten bytes per. Okay. Well, So relocations length is, oh, 664090. And they're 10 bytes per. I think it's just, which would be higher than 65536. So yes, this is the problem, except this is wrong. So this gets bytes per relocation. Except it's not wrong. I, that looks right. So number of reloca relocations length. Oh, six. Oh, we didn't assert because we weren't running the X64 build, right? This one, there we go. <sighs> See? Remember like 10 minutes ago when I said it'll probably assert? Well, if I had been running the correct build, it would have. What is a relocation? Type aliasing? No, it's, uh, okay. When the operating system loads your file, it has to convert offsets in the file into pointers in memory, right? Like you wrote out a data structure with a bunch of pointers that point around to other things. And relocations, you're saying, hey, this thing over here is a pointer and it points to something else. It points to this other thing over here, right? And then at load time, the operating system goes down the list of relocations and changes the integer value in that pointer slot so that it becomes a valid pointer. So if, if these become wrong or incomplete or are not added, then you're in trouble. Okay, so now I need to start reading the documentation. Number of relocations overflow, I guess this stands for. We're really gonna wanna OVFL. Section contains extended relocations. The count of relocations for the section exceeds the 16 bits that is reserved for it in the section header. If the number of relocations field. What? Is OXFFFF. The actual relocation count is stored in the virtual address field. of the first relocation. Oh my God, that is so awful. Yeah, it's totally, it's totally backward compatibility. Now the thing is, dude, I haven't looked at this code in a fricking long time. So the first relocation, why doesn't the first relocation need its virtual address field? Do I have to write a dummy relocation? I guess so. I don't remember. I don't remember what field is what. Okay, 
at least that's a multiple of 10. Uh, this problem is only when using the x64 backend to generate an object file, which I think we also support on Linux, or if we don't currently, we will eventually. So there is that. Okay. So let's just look at how we want to structure this. So we're returning the number of relocations and the pointer to relocations. Okay, so nobody, nobody uses this value. So I'm just going to call it something real big. Number of relocations or FFFF if overflow. Yes, that's really horrible variable name. I guess Linux So, We're going to have to set the flag as well. I don't remember where to set the damn flag, but. We'll figure that out. See, the funny thing is we were going to make this relative pointers at some point, which would drastically reduce the number of relocations basically to zero. But we haven't done that yet, and we should, we should make this work. For undergraduate research, you need to learn LLVM. Do I have any tips? No, I started looking at LLVM, and I really didn't like it, so I had somebody else do it. It's a good strategy when you don't like something. This is where structural types would come in handy. What are you talking about? Bro, what are you talking about? Number of relocations result can be FFFF. We have more than... Five relocations are running on Windows in that case, or, or some of it to you by cough OS. A dummy first relocation um, that contains the actual. Okay. 
so <coughs> this number we're doing by adding all the bytes and dividing by 10, but it should be the same as the number of things in all three of these lists. So I should be able to say this plus this plus this. And then we'll assert that those quantities are the same. And the reason we're asserting that is because I want to know this number because I want to write a dummy relocation out with that in it. Okay, so we're going to say assert number of this thing is equal to initial this thing. All right. We're going to get rid of this assert. We're going to say incomplete set this. That is very important. We don't want to forget it. Shaping the type like the problem. But that... See, that then we would have to have totally different code path for Windows and Linux because Linux has a higher uh, has a higher limit and we don't have to do this there, right? It's maybe not the right move. Or at least, you know, making it limiting it to a small integer is not the right move. Maybe you would only signal overflow on Linux. It's just not, it's just not a real problem. <laughs> there is pizza, guy. there is pizza, okay? For those who do not believe that there is pizza, we started the stream eating pizza and you were late and we have more. It is unfortunately not as good as the super garlic pizza that I got last time, so. You know. You win some, you lose some. Pizza. Super garlic is the best garlic. Did I like not turn off the vibe? This is very foreign to a web developer. Well, that's okay. That's okay. All right, so we're going to assert that these are the same. Now, if in initial, if initial D then, well, Gonna add an overflow result here. And we're gonna write a relocation. virtual address, I think that's this field. Let's just make sure right relocation doesn't do anything weird. Is that in the header file? Address, symbol index, relocation type.
Okay. Why? Define this constant, bro. Oh my God. All right, let's not worry about it. I'm not gonna clean up somebody else's code. Okay, so we're going to write a relocation, and I guess we put initial number of relocations plus one, because we now have this dummy relocation, right? Okay, so we write a dummy relocation. <clears throat> and then um, so if actually Let's just return, okay. We're just gonna return the number of relocations. We don't, the caller will handle overflow. We don't worry about it. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Okay, if overflow result, if we're on Linux, we assert that overflow result cannot happen. Otherwise, we do this. Oh, never mind. Uh, if overflow result number of relocations is F, 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 F. and then we need to flag the frickin' thing. Okay, let's get rid of this. Okay. All right, so Who sets these? Do these happen at the end or at the beginning? So really what we should be doing in principle is adding generic handling to deal with this overflow problem on any possible uh, segment but let's make it work initially and then we can deal with that all right that's some Linux stuff So, then we go way down and do like, 
Like we have all this relocation handling here and it's like, uh, uh, all right. Hmm. Where does that happen? Oh, we call it from back here. That's way after prepared data. Okay. Um, so Here's what's going to happen. If we have an overflow result, we're going to have to do a modify. Offset. Um, types, segment, flags, <clears throat> oh, we do this in code, we have the same cut and paste here. That's all fine. Yeah, that's the only other assert. Okay. So we're going to say assert type segment flags not equal to zero. Assert. <clears throat> Image skin link in relic overflow. We or that in. All right. Now I don't know if it's really eight bytes. We have to go back and look. Okay. Oh. Wait, header is just. Virtual size, virtual address, section number, characteristics. Header offset. Characteristics. OK. Instead of calling it segment flags, so that's a U32. So we're going to modify four bytes header, old value, characteristics. I feel like I lost a letter. Modify that. Okay, so now offset characteristics and U32 old value characteristics zero. 
Well, that's, we did a thing. How many mistakes did we make? Potentially infinite. Oh. I forgot a dot items here. Of course, it tells me the plus is the problem because Visual Studio is very smart and just wants to help. All right, so we track all our renames. Can we possibly go without asserting? Probably. Question is, then how bad is it? I don't remember if we've, oh, oh, oh. Initial number of relocation, 66409. Number of relocation, 66410. Oh, because I did add one. Okay, hold on. Uh, if... If overflow result I meant to do that I am working on what to do when we're using the x64 backend and we're trying to write a data segment that has more than 64k relocations in it, which the cough file doesn't like. All right, so we didn't barf. This still says zero relocations. That bothers me. I don't know if this is accurate, though. Um, I mean, it says there's no relocations in our data. Dude, I don't know. I don't know how this works. I'm scared to try running the program. I'm going to run it. Dude, it worked the first time. It worked the first time. It worked the first time. Time. How awesome was that? You do nutty backward compatible things from the 1970s and they just work. But of course, if we had an algebraic optional special ass cover type from Haskell, it would have all been better. Am I sure I ran the right back end? Yes. So this is x64 back end. I'm pretty sure I ran the right back end. Let's see. It's running. We, you know, when it doesn't work, we don't even get a window. So, yeah. I mean, we can double dog prove it. Uh, let me let me go back here and uh, take out the debug info, and we'll say, okay, so Dell, so go on run tree. So go debug.exe, right? So now if I hit F5 to run, we got nothing to run. Now F7, build X64 version. It builds in 1.4 seconds, which is starting to get long. 
probably because of all these damn relocations or something, we need to go deal with that sometime in the future. Compile times are getting long, but that's much shorter than the LLVM time. We're not, uh, so we're running LLD, of course, but um, we're not actually using the LLVM backend to generate our object files. Okay. So, run. We deleted it, now it's there. So we fixed it. We fixed it. That was a relatively hairy thing. That could have been scary. Is the linker still a bottleneck? It sort of is. We switched over to linking dynamic libraries and it takes less time. It takes like 10% of the compilation time now instead of half. It's still too much and you don't want to be forced to link dynamic libraries all the time. Looking at some other code, it checks for overflow with greater than or equal to 65535. I'm not sure if that's correct. That's not what I get by reading this. It looks to me like OXFFFF is valid. It's only if the overflow flag is set that uh yeah i think 65535 relocations is valid i think that other code is being unnecessarily paranoid you could try it but i don't want to necessarily exactly uh You know, fix Sokoban not running with X Explorer backend. What's going on here? Subversion once in a while gets really confused about uh, about like when somebody does a file or a folder updates. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, I said to do that. Dude, subversion is mostly fine, but like at times like this, Undo add, revert. Yeah, okay. Gee, why didn't it work a second ago? I don't know. Could just be defensive against anything that reads cough files and only checks equals 65535. Potentially, yeah. I don't believe in doing that though. <laughs> yeah, I... I believe 65535 is valid. I mean, it has to be because like if the people who had put that in first were thinking of one of the values being an out of band thing, then they just would have made it bigger, right? They would have made the integer bigger. Okay. So at some point, we are going to want to uh, factor that into a more general thing, like I said, but I don't want to do that right now. I'm just very happy. That could have been like a symptom like that, like on the X64 backend, the program simply doesn't run. That could have been an all day debugging session, but it was under an hour. Uh, any questions or anything like that? I kind of just want to hang out. I, Flew back from Los Angeles today, so I kind of don't want to solve any real hard problems right now or do any. 
like he would be a substantial refactor to do do uh, to make that thing that we just did general for all the segments, and I don't want to do that late at night. I mean, it's not really that late, but I've been sick and I've been flying around. Witness playthrough. You just talked about linking dynamic libraries, making things faster. You're talking about linking in the compiler or was it in user program? So, so we use the systems linker as the last step in building an executable. And when we give it dynamic libraries instead of static libraries, it links a lot faster. Now you might think, oh, that makes sense because dynamic libraries get linked mostly at runtime when you start up. But the amount of time that it takes to link dynamic libraries at runtime is actually pretty small. <laughs> so, yeah. Recommend any good games. I'm going to be playing Blackout starting in two days. We're going to own. Uh, I was visiting some friends in L.A. Is it an acronym for people's names? No, it is not an acronym for people's names. Funny guess, though. Funny guess. That was pretty good. We, we got some things done. Let's put some code up on the screen just so that we could pretend that we're programming. Still. Look at all those value folders. Why is the type table relocation separate from the other relocation tables? Um, well, so it's, it's been a long time since I looked at this, but every section, so the, the whole file is uh, broken into a bunch of sections. Every section has various properties, right? So some could be read only, some can have executable code or not, and whatever. Um, a few of those sections, the operating system has very specific plans about, right? Like we start your program by loading this particular section and loading up this symbol and other sections can be whatever you want. Now, well, we can go back over here and I can, uh, I can show you what all the sections were. Uh, whoops. Is it sections? No. Anyway, these are all the sections. So there's R data, which is read only data, P data, which I think is debugging. I don't know what GFIDs is, that might be debugging. Um, Dude, I don't know what half these sections are, honestly. Um, but uh, the text is for our program, right? Our data is for read-only data that we put in the program. And then I put types. This is the type table. And it goes into its own section um, for two reasons. One is just so that it becomes easy to see how big it is relative to the rest of the program. Like right now you can look at that and say, ah, oh, you know, our type tables are getting kind of big. We might want to do something about that. Um, now too, uh, well, you might want to jettison the type table from the executable for some reason, like, Say that you know that it's not going to try to dereference the type table, right? Um, then you could uh, you just drop that segment from the executable. There's other things too. It just makes it easy to find the type information. Like if you're writing a diagnostic tool, you're like, oh, the type table is right there in that section called dot types. Now, 
So the original question was why separate relocations? And the answer is just uh, every section has its own relocations for that section, if I remember correctly. That might be wrong, but I think it's true. I think if you load, if you load a section, you do all its relocations at the load time of that section. Um, those relocations can point into other sections, but you don't relocate the addresses of things in other sections or something. Uh, no, I'm in California, not Washington. It's just I don't live that close to Los Angeles. I'm in San Francisco. Those two places are far. Do I mix data and instructions in .txt, e.g. jump tables? Um, currently, we do not generate jump tables uh, in the x64 backend. I don't know if we will. Um, right now, it's not really trying to be an optimizing backend. So it's not on the short-term agenda, right? If you want optimizations, you use the LLVM backend. Um, in the longer term, who knows? I don't really, you know, I don't feel like it matters that much where you put things. Uh, it's really just down to personal taste. And I don't know. I mean, you know, like I said, maybe if somebody wants to inspect the types data, I've made it easier for them. It's not even necessarily that much easier because you could look up the symbol for the like we write out these symbols for num type table entries and so forth. And this says, oh, this is in the type section at this offset. And this is in the type section at this offset, right? Um, so, Well, it wouldn't be that hard to find it by symbol either. So, I don't know, man. Favorite pizza toppings, pepperoni, garlic, garlic, and pepperoni, and pepperoncinis, and roasted red peppers, and... Ah, that's pretty pretty good. Those are good pizza toppings. No, pineapple is not in the list of favorite pizza toppings. That is not correct. Is there a better garlic than super garlic? If there is, I don't know. There might be. In the infinity that is the universe, there must be a better garlic than super garlic. I just have never encountered it. I agree. Pineapple pizza is in the bad place. Will macros be typed? Basically work on part, top of parser trees, operating symbols, or some kind of typed AST? Yes. They will be made for operating on uh, the same kind of stuff you get in your meta program. Right? So they're not going to be like a totally different data representation. They're going to have as much in common with that as they can. Am I just Wario? I don't think I'm Wario. Do I look like Wario? I don't think I look like Wario. I'll send an email to Ignacio, which I'll draft here. I just fixed the x64 backend problem. The type table was getting really big. And more than six or five to six pointers in it, which which then overflowed the uh, the maximum number of locations in the top file. Fortunately, long. Ago, 
go. Uh, they added an extension. So I just had to use that. Um, for now, I am using it only for the type table, but eventually we'll want to apply this to all segments of the top file. Um, a type tab table is way bigger than it probably needs to be. We don't strictly need to output every type, uh, we can just um, we can just Mark, I think, I think we can just mark at compile time anything that could be, anything that has type info uh, applied to it. just recursively trace through that. Um, it's annoying, but probably results in us not outputting very many procedure types, which I think is the majority of the type table. Also, of course, if we um, do the type tables as relative pointers that gets rid of most of the relocations. But the data size would still be pretty big. program size and that's on the x64 back end where we just spew uh, tons and tons of instructions I just fixed the problem with Upon it and then compile via the X explore backend. Okay. I might be incorrectly unique. Defying the type table entries, entries, but I check that in the past every time. Check that twice in the past, and both times it looked right. Okay, I'm just going to send this. Having trouble formulating my words. been a pretty successful programming day even though I spent it flying
Hope I didn't typo too much.